The COVID-19 pandemic had significantly affected delivery services all across Indonesia, where some of them have to deal with many challenges and various problems. And amongst the most affected was Lion Parcel, a logistic and delivery service company that provides air freight shipping. The company, like many others, was affected by the shipping crisis due to limited number of flights during the pandemic. But what about Lions Parcel's current situation after going through the pandemic? Have their shipping activities returned to normal? Well, we're going to find out more, uh, you know, answers straight from the Lion Parcel Chief Executive Officer Farian Kiarana, who is right, here, you know, who is going to join us on this discussion. Mm -hmm. So, without further ado, good morning, Farian. Thank you so much for being here with us. Good morning. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Carol. Good Thanks morning. For the invite. Of course, and of course, we want to congratulate you yeah. on making the list of Forbes 30 Under 30 Indonesia in last March. So, congrats <laughs> on that. Thank Kudos you. to you. Now, speaking about that on the list, um, you know, 30 Under 30. How long are you coming to the age of 30? Yeah, if how you don't close are we to that 30 mark? <laughs> So I actually uh, just turned 30 this year. Ah. So last year was like the, the last uh, uh, opportunity for me to ever be able to be ever on the list. Yeah. Hey. So yeah, it was actually like a, like a close moment for, for me and the company as well. A good okay. momentum yeah. coming to 30, of course. And of course, you know, how do you feel to be a part of the list now, Farian? So uh, uh, at first, uh, it was like uh, surprising because <laughs> You know, like there's a lot of uh, uh, great young entrepreneurs in in the country, as well as like the impacts that they uh, they they drive, the what they stood up for. Yeah, it's a very interesting to be able to be a part of uh, uh, being part of the, uh, the list, the pre prestigious list with them as well. Right. Yeah. So um, obviously you just made the Forbes 30 under 30 list. However, we talked a little bit before we got on air and Lion Parcel had been doing this for quite some time already mm -hmm. for uh, almost a decade, I would say. So this has actually not just been happening overnight. This is something that you've right. worked towards. How does this uh, achievement mark uh, basically this milestone mark uh, Lion Parcel as a company, what, how do you feel that it's going to help you open more doors in the future? So actually, uh, interestingly, it was uh, right after the announcement or like the week uh, during the announcement, uh, the LinkedIn profile, my personal LinkedIn profile, like shots up on the number of the invites, mm. as well as a lot of the business proposals coming in. And it certainly helps with the, uh, uh, during the hiring of the new team member of Lion Puzzle, oh. especially like we feel like a uh, funny thing was like the team feels more proud than I actually am, in fact. Because <laughs> like they feel like the, the team are, are so happy that they can deliver this and also like they can be a part of this. So yeah, it's a, it's a big moment, not just for me, but for the whole company as well. And definitely, and of course, you know, you guys as Lion Parson family and you as the CEO making the list because, you know, it's the maneuver that you guys went through, especially during the hard times amidst the pandemic. Can you please share with us what kind of like, you know, strategies and the twitches that you have to made uh, during, you know, especially the height of the pandemic in the last two and a half years? Yeah, pandemic caused a lot of crisis, even in, in the logistics sector, where even though in terms of the demand side, logistics is the one who are like positively affected by COVID okay. since uh, everybody is at home. They, they move the parcels around more, but it's more like maintaining the, the, the balance. See, when, when it first hits hap the, the first hit happened, we have to maintain the balance between who goes to the office and who does not. Because okay. although logistics is part of the uh, exclusive uh, uh, industries that, that can maintain close to 100% workforce, especially in the operation sector and the customer service sector. But it's more like about maintaining the balance where like some is allowed to do the, the work from home basis and some has to go in the office basis. Okay. And the bigger problem is more like on the supply side. So demand side, we're not too worried. So the supply side, because Lion Parcel, we rely heavily on the air freight. We rely heavily on our group uh, network, so yeah. we focus mo mostly on the uh, 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 inter-island and as well as intra-island all across Indonesia. Okay. When that hits, all this flight shut down in a sense like for a couple of 
a good two weeks, it was there's no flights available, there's no commercial flights available. Mm. So we have to maneuver through all that, which is like for logistics, it's it's like a well-oiled machine, right? So mm -hmm. you wouldn't want uh, uh, changes every day. You wouldn't want to to disrupt your uh, operation flow every couple of days or every couple of weeks. So it's more like a, like a muscle memory kind of thing. Mm. So during the pandemic, there's a lot of uncertainty happening. So which airports are open, which airports are closed. So to get to the city, how would we do it? So we have to do combination of the flights and the trucks available. How will we utilize the, the uh, trucking, the train, as well as the sea freight even. So it's more like being nimble, right? Mm. So our strategy back then was like, so uh, uh, we remember we, we come into the office at Saturday and we were like, guys, in, in uh, two days time, the government will close all commercial flights available mm -hmm. for the next two weeks. So how would we handle the demand surge while our supply side is, is, is disrupted? Mm -hmm. So we, we, start to, we start to explore like a couple of, um, a lot of possible alternatives routes and of course how to still maintain a good customer satisfaction yeah. meanwhile on the back end we were basically going like uh, 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 improvisation so mm -hmm. we just need to do whatever we need to do back then yeah it was like an interesting time la. yeah uh, Varian, uh, despite all of those uh, issues that you've had to face all the adjustments you had to make how was it uh, to balance economically? Because we do know, you know, demand you mentioned gone up for shipping, um, but obviously it, cost has gone up as well. Um, how did you balance that so that it didn't, end, uh, you know, affect the end user too much or the your customers? Because obviously there's going to be cost you a lot more in regards to not only the new uh, implementations of protocols and the uh, yeah. the reduction of the numbers of flights, and especially with rising costs of gas and things of that sort, fuel rather. Uh, yeah, so actually we learned a lot from this COVID, right? So uh, one of the key takeaway was before COVID, uh, most of our shipments close to like a good 60 to 70% of our shipments is actually going via air freight. Right. Now, because of COVID, we start to, we start to explore like a couple of alternatives. So we built our own trucking network as well. Oh. We, previously, we don't feel the need to because we have the air freights. Mm -hmm. But now, because uh, uh, the fluctuations of, and the dynamics of the market, we look at trucks, trucking more seriously. And turns out, we created a new product born from this COVID. So we created like a more economical product, which is the Jago Pack. Okay. And now Jago Pack for us accounts for a good half of our shipments, which wow. is everything, most of it via trucking. So from the contingency planning, more from like a, 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 a that day basis or that crisis basis, uh, we created a long lasting product out of it. And surprisingly, the market uh, absorbs and the market uh, 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 likes the product. Mm. So that that is a very interesting takeaway also from us. You know, to come up with ideas like this or be able to find workarounds is, you know, obviously one of the reasons why you made the uh, Forbes 30 under 30 list. Um, yeah. Look, you, you, you've obviously know what you're talking about. You're a very bright young man. Who would you say is your mentor that influenced you most on your journey as a successful business person? So my mentor would uh, obviously be my boss so it's actually my uncle as well pa oh. Rusdi Kirana okay so uh, from my university days I've been sit in meetings uh, in a sit in meetings with with him learning more about the airline learning more about the business and also most importantly leadership right so it's about mentality for him because the way he taught us it's not like how he 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 likes the, the millennial way of teaching. No, he, he goes like old school. He goes <laughs> like really tough love is still love kind of mentality. Right. So uh, one, of the, one of his famous, famous advice to me was, um, so you know, like all these millennials, usually they, they fall into like a certain categories. Either one, they feel easily complacent where they feel like they're already good enough, they're smart enough and everything. Mm -hmm. And the second part is where they beat themselves up too much. In mm -hmm. a sense, they feel like demoralized and depressed 
because the pressure coming in with them and of course uh, uh, this mental health uh, uh, is affected. Mm -hmm. So what he said to me back then was, at the end of the day, you need two things. So one, of the, one, one thing is to have the ambition. Whenever you feel like you've done big enough, you've done, you've reached enough, mm -hmm. you have to have a higher ambition. So mm -hmm. those ambitions is the one what keeps you moving forward, what, what gets you out of bed, yeah. in a sense. Okay. And then second part is appreciation. So he always talks about being, appreciation, being uh, 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 appreciating on the things that he has done or what we have done yeah. and the journey that we've passed so far. Because that way, we don't really like beat ourselves too much and continues looking at like the things that have not been done, but, but mm -hmm. more like appreciate, you know what, it's not bad so far. We get to this place. Mm. So one of the story was like, Every time he, he board a, a, a Lion Air flights or a Batik flights, he always he will sit in front and he will look back all the way yeah. to the passengers, and he will starts to feel like a sense of accomplishment, right? So because he feels like people still love the product, people still board the plane, and mm -hmm. like there's a lot of there's a lot of appreciation coming in. Mm. So that's how you you grow the gratitude within yourself. Is, so I think that's. That too is very important. See. So ambition and appreciation. Great advice. Seems, yeah, and of course, especially during the pandemic, there's always a silver lining with every situation that is happening. Uh, if you don't mind me saying, uh, Talia, yeah. and that's why you know there is a, a lot of um, ways that we can come out, you know, and solution. You became a solution maker because of it. Now, being on the list is more than just being young but also you're very impactful and you're putting a really high benchmark now, especially for the young guns. And it's good you say that, you know, you do have a mentor that's showing the old school way still works, but then of course implementing it with the, you know, the new ways or the millennials way. Now, speaking about that, how did you and your team uh, and your uh, app transform or disrupt the status quo? Do you think a disruption uh, of existing businesses or is just the way that people is living, especially with the younger generation now? So I think in the logistics part, right? So logistics is a is a old old industry. It's it's mm -hmm. like way goes way back pre-colonial area. Uh, uh, it's already been there. And for us, at the end, logistics is not. Uh, we don't see the disruption in the sense that we have to destroy the existing, but more like simplifying the existing because we see tech now. Every every company has to use tech some way and they use tech differently. Either they use for the innovation part or they use for the operation part. Yeah. So for us, it's more our, our angle of a tech is more like the seamlessness, how to make it easy, how to make it simple. Because Sea Lion Passer in itself, we are quite different than the uh, uh, incumbents. For us, we are only 1,000 uh, people strong. But we managed to deliver to all over Indonesia with close to 97% on-time performance. Wow. So we can still maintain with such a, a, a <clears throat> asset light model for a logistic, which is quite uh, uh, uncommon because for us, we, um, we, we believe in the collaboration. We believe in the connection rather than conquer. We believe in uh, connecting and aligning mm -hmm. with the, all the party that is uh, 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 our partner in the whole of Indonesia. Because we feel like Indonesia is such a big market. Yes, we have the airline part. Yes, we can connect the hub to hub. We can connect the city to city. But then all the way from the house of the sender to the house of the buyer, which is spread out all across uh, uh, the archipelago, it is not an, uh, an easy job. Yeah. So for us, it's more like about how to decouple, how to make it like simple. What, what is really like the minimum effort to be done? Because the more simple it is, right? So because logistics is all about consistency. So when you, when you ship it from Jakarta to, to Surabaya, big cities, it will be probably easier rather than you ship it from Ambon, let's say, to Medan. Because mm -hmm. like the culture-wise, the time difference, everything, and the understanding right. of the tech and, and logistics in itself is very different. So for us, is how to make it like, like easy so everybody can, can really learn the business quite, quite easily and they know 
what to do or like what to monitor every single day to achieve the standard that is coherent across the whole country standards. So the part, the part, the 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 easiness come to play, yeah. and also uh, of course commercial. So because we incentivize them based on performance. So for example, uh, as simple as if you deliver when the item is uh, uh, coming in your city, you yeah. deliver it within the day or within the same day, you get yeah. a higher commission delivery point rather than if you deliver yeah. tomorrow or then uh, the following right. day. So it's how you align. So for us, it's more about learning how the psychology and the behavioral science of if we create this incentive, what will they think of it? What will they make of it? Mm -hmm. So what will be they incentivize? As well as we have to think about what is the potential fraud? What is the potential right. loopholes in this yeah. in the system? Yeah. So it's more like um, how the technology empower the human. So not technology uh, 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 replace the human because logistics is a, is a people people game. It's it's you need actual people to move the parcels around. Yeah. So how you how you incentivize and how you the tech tech can can empower the people to do better. Yeah. And as course, what what we like to see in the technology in logistics and customer satisfaction. If you don't mind me saying, because I mean for me as a customer of Lion Parcel itself, I've always enjoyed you know when everything is just so simplified where I want to send any kind of you know packagings yeah. and whatnot and receiving it too. Yeah. You know receiving it, receiving packages that is well done and whatnot and you know and when it's even if it's faster it's even better. Right. And it's good that you know uh, Farid yeah. really mentioned about simplifying because simplicity is what we're really keen for right now. Yeah, I really like that mindset where nowadays another lesson we learned during the pandemic is you don't want to have like you want to trim the fat as much as possible when you have yeah. a, especially when you have a large company exactly. and having a thousand employees mm. to have handle such a large business it means you're maximizing uh, the return on mm -hmm. what you're putting into your company. So you mentioned that you reached uh, most parts of Indonesia already at this point. What's next for you? I mean, you do set, talk about recalibrating your targets, and now that you have hit this Forbes 30 under 30, what's the recalibration that from <laughs> now on forward? So uh, for us, we look at the domestic, uh, uh, how we can enhance our services available. So for example, just within this year or, or, or last year, we continuously uh, improve our existing offerings. So for example, one of the, one of the complications when the sender ship an item, their actual weight is like, probably is only like a, a less than a kg, less mm -hmm. than a kilogram. But then because they try to do this packaging because they, they want the, the, the ship, shipment to be secured, right? Mm -hmm. So they put up some good packaging to it and it causes the dimension weight to increase. Mm -hmm. So it becomes like, like a trade-off for them. So if, if you want the, ship to, uh, the, the item to be secured, they do a proper packaging, but the proper packaging will cause you more weight because right. it, it is counted as the dimensional weight. Right. It, it adds to the weight. So for us, how can we, for example, because there's, uh, there's always dispute around that. So for us, we weigh the dimensional weight up to a certain uh, volumetric, up to a certain kilogram. Because it's for us, it's simpler as well. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, for example, different agents all across Indonesia have a different meter or how they count right. because it, it causes too much confusion and, and a lot of loopholes in, in the game. So for us, make it simple. Just, just count the actual weight. Irregardless, all our network is only counting by the weight, not really on the volume. So why should we charge the volume to the customer? True, good right? point. So, uh, it, it's, it's things like that. And so aside from our improving the core fundamentals of what we have right now, we are also expanding to a lot of different services as well. One of the things that we look at is more on the international shipments because uh, being part of the Lion Group, Lion Group has a, a couple of airlines uh, outside of, of the country as well. We have an airline in Ma Malaysia, we have an airline in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And all this airline, they fly not just domestically within uh, their respective countries, but also they connect to the other countries as well. Mm -hmm. So it is very interesting because we can implement the same model. We always talk like this. So why can't we ship an item uh, 
uh, to Singapore as easy as we send it to Surabaya? Mm -hmm. Why can't we send an item to Malaysia as easy as we send it to, to Medan, for example? It's a similar flight hour. Distance, right. So yeah. it should be like within the same price range and uh, should be within the, the SLA. But international shipments, they perceive as expensive, complicated, yeah. right. uh, yeah. uh, uh, long lead time. So it feels like there's still like a lot of simplicity needs to be done where we can really come in and, and decouple the process, right? Okay. So that's also like a, an interesting thing for us. And lastly was, so right now we are focusing on the uh, uh, 3PL side, the query service of, of the business. But then we look at the, the seller, the producer, right? So look, courier service is at the end is a commodity game. Everybody can ship an item from A, point A to point B with different price, with different SLA, with different promises. So at the end, the sellers is also looking what is the value add for each logistic. If, if everybody is just coming with the same offering, hey, I can send your parcel from, from your house to, to, to your neighbor, Everybody can do that, mm -hmm. but then what we try to create is a more personalized approach to this uh, senders. We try to add the value, so we work directly with the product manufacturing. We work, we work with the product design. We also work with the marketing. We work with the storage, and we also work for, for the shipping. So it's like the whole end-to-end -end from the product creation all the way the product is delivered to the uh, buyer's house. Mm. So it's, it's a farm-to-table mindset, but yeah. we, we try to create like the whole end-to-end. -end. Right. So Simply yeah. and yeah. simplified yeah. too. Simply, yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, so Simplified. <laughs> so anyway, uh, thank you so much for your mm. time today. Uh, Farid, it's been great talking to you. I found this uh, discussion very insightful, and I'm glad you're get, uh, able to give us a deeper look inside Lion Parcel. Obviously, congratulations once again on making the Forbes 30 and the 30. We wish you nothing but continued success, not only to you, but for your company as well. Thank you so much, Farian. You have a great morning. Thank stay you safe so much. and stay healthy too. Take care. All right.